Hello everyone and welcome to Hokkai Banking. At the outset, let me thank each one of you for showing so much love to my first video. In fact, the main aim of this YouTube channel is to give you a Hokkai view of latest burning issues in banking and at the same time simplify it with the help of practical examples to understand them better. I will try to put up one video every week so that we don't miss out on important developments in banking. Continuing over my previous video, the main aim of this RBI circular on opening of current accounts is to prevent siphoning and diversion of funds, which is in fact the biggest reason of big ticket loans becoming NPS and the frauds happening at that level. So now with this circular, RBI says that banks can monitor these accounts very closely and minutely if the current accounts are not allowed if already a cash credit account is operational. Now today we will touch upon three main areas. First, what will be the impact of the circular on public sector, private sector and foreign banks? Who is going to benefit out of this three? Secondly, we will see if there are any loopholes or gaps in the circular. And thirdly, the circular talks about one previous circular dated 5th December 2018. Now that circular actually referred to all those accounts which were having working capital facility of more than 150 crores. So what was that? Well, we will find out all this and more in today's video. It is completely free to subscribe. So go ahead and click on subscribe to receive all latest videos and press the bell icon to get instant notifications on your mobile. All right, now let us see the impact of latest RBI guidelines on different banks. We will first see the percentage of non-retail loans. Now, non-retail loans are primarily loans given to MSMEs, big corporates and firms who typically open current accounts and avail cash credit and term loan facilities. As you can see, more financing is done by public sector banks. Around 66% non-retail loans are given by public sector banks. 28% by private sector and around 5.9% by foreign banks. But now if we compare the share of current accounts, it is only 45.8% in public sector banks and quite low given the share of financing done by them. It is more than 40% in private sector banks and similarly it is higher in foreign banks around 13.6% as compared to the financing done by them. Now, current accounts were usually opened at private sector and foreign banks because of attractive cash management services to manage the receivables and payables. But with this new RBI circular now, clearly the share of current accounts will go down from private sector and foreign banks and it will be public sector banks who will gain maximum out of it. All right, now let us see the various gaps and the loopholes in the RBI circular. Let me just summarize what I discussed in my first video about opening of current accounts. Now, if the borrower is having CCOD account, it cannot be opened by the lending bank as well as the non-lending bank. But if he is not having CCOD account, but having other exposure like term loan account, the exposure slabs are divided into three parts. Exposure less than 5 crores, exposure greater than 5 crores but less than 50 crores and exposure greater than 50 crores. Now that the two slabs are clearly defined, for the slab which is lesser than 5 crore, it is not very clear whether non-lending banks can open current accounts or not. Ideally, it shouldn't be allowed, but it must be clearly specified in the circular. So if we see the first loophole, it is not very clear whether non-lending banks can open current accounts for exposure less than 5 crore. The second loophole is the term banking exposure is not clearly defined as exposure can be through bonds, debentures, etc which can chain, which a, which a treasury can buy and sell. These are basically moving numbers. Who will maintain this movement when the exposure goes beyond the slabs of 5 crore or 50 crore? Will it be monitored periodically, that is monthly, quarterly basis? So this aspect has to be clearly defined in the circular. The next loophole is for loans greater than 5 crores. Now banks have data integration available in Krillic. Now that Krillic is basically central repository of information on large credits. But what about accounts less than 5 crores? How will it be operationally possible to carry out this entire exercise? That is not clearly defined in the circular. Coming to banks, now will there be any kind of penalty to banks if the guidelines are not adhered to? 
they have mentioned that within three months of the date of the circular that is three months from 6th august the guidelines should be in implementation but what if the banks are not able to comply will there be any penalty to the banks what about customers not willing to transfer their accounts due to better cash management services that they get at other banks will there be any penalty to such customers for not closing or shifting accounts as per the rbi circular now one more rule is banks which are having lesser exposure and mostly it is private and foreign banks in most of the cases will they be willing to provide any cash credit on term loan facility to low rated borrowers so that they retain their current accounts will they be willing i don't think that will actually happen and finally how will handholding be done for such a large database of customers coming under the purview of this circular so these are various loopholes that rbi should address otherwise the implementation will be a major roadblock now let us look at one more aspect of the rbi new rules which talks about a previous circular in case of borrowers covered under guidelines on loan system for delivery of bank credit issued via circular dated 5th december 2018 bifurcation of working capital facility into loan component and cash credit component shall be maintained at individual bank levels in all cases including consortium lending banks provide working capital facility by way of cash credit overdraft working capital demand loan purchase discount of bills bank guarantee letter of credit factoring and many other facilities now this guideline was basically issued for borrowers having working capital facility above 150 crores it stipulates a minimum level of loan component in fund based working capital finance and a mandatory credit conversion factor ccf for the undrawn portion of cash credit or overdraft limits availed by large borrowers now how is this calculation done we will see with the help of an example if you see the current outstanding working capital facility it has to be broken down into two parts working capital loan and cash credit now working capital loan is basically the term loan part and cash credit is the cc facility now as per the circular 40% of sanctioned aggregate fund based working capital limit should be working capital loan component and in fact it was 60% with effect from 1st july 2019 now let us try to understand this with the help of an example as per the circular the outstanding loan component that is working capital loan wcl must be equal to at least 40% of the sanctioned fund based working capital limit including ad hoc limits and tods so when we are calculating this the ad hoc and tod limit should be added now we have to bifurcate current outstanding working capital facility into working capital loan and cash credit facility now when we are calculating this we have to see what are the components that we have to add and what are the components that we have to exclude from this calculation so tod and ad hoc limit has to be added now for pre shipment credit and post shipment credit it is clearly mentioned that the bifurcation into loan and cash credit components shall be operative after excluding the export credit limits that is pre shipment and post shipment so these two have to be removed from the calculation similarly bills limit for inland sales from the working capital limit has to be excluded so even this is excluded from the calculation now as far as commercial papers are concerned investment by the bank in the commercial papers issued by the borrower shall form part of the loan component provided the investment is sanctioned as part of the working capital limit so yes this component will be added so if we see the final calculation of working capital loan component it will be 60% of 1500 plus 10 plus 30 that is 924 crores so we have to deduct this amount from the current outstanding working capital facility to get the amount of cc facility that can be provided all right now that we have discussed various aspects of this circular let us wait if rbi can come up with some faqs or clarifications on how these changes are expected to be implemented because it is a very challenging task ahead for the banks well that's it for today uh, in my next video i will come up with a new burning topic in banking Till then have a nice weekend and keep watching Hokai Banking. Thank you. It is completely free to subscribe so go ahead and click on subscribe to receive all latest videos and press the bell icon to get instant notifications on your mobile.